in this video, we are taking our shower room from drab to the flat. It's not all plain sailing, but we do overcome some errors. We make the room waterproof. Take a quick trip to the beach. Still with sunny clad. And we are excited to share the end result in the next phase of our van conversion. We hope you enjoy. We've cleared out the mattresses because we're going to be making a bit of a mess in here today. In a previous video, I made this toilet shower toilet cubicle um, with a temporary door. It's got sort of a nine mil door on the front and it is a little bit flimsy. But I've decided that I need to slightly change the dimension of it anyway. And then using bathroom cladding to make it into a shower cubicle. The first thing is what it needs to do is dissemble it. When I had some plywood delivered, it come like wrapped in some old scuffy hardboard. I'm just gonna use that hardboard to make a template for the bedroom wall end. So you'd think it would be the same, but I don't wanna take that risk, draw around the birch and ruin it. That's not bad. I'm gonna use that as a rough template. The thinking here is that if we get the ends right out of the birch, we can then reassemble the inside and start to get it waterproofed. And we're gonna try and make some storage space in the void of the wall as well. To achieve this, I first of all cut the end piece and I used this piece of batten upright, draw around the edge and then I cut out with my plunge saw so I could make sure it was nice and straight. And this gave us the opening for the inner bedroom storage. So we're just mocking it all up. We're gonna have to take it in, out, in, out, in, out because we've got this end piece in now. The next thing I need to do is cut strips that will sit in here. Okay, so these two hickeys here, similar to the ones at the back in how I've constructed them. So I've just cut them so they run parallel with the batten and it will frame in here. So the storage that will be accessible from the bedroom side. The longer wall was then cut out again of nine millimeter birch plywood, cut out some holes for some bits and bats and started to draw out some more storage. Done here is drawn around the aperture and then measured nine millimeter using this nine millimeter ply. I'm just going to cut along here, here, here and here with my plunge saw and then notch the edges out. And then that way we'll have like a little cubby on the end of here. We'll have a light switch at the top here. This is Dave's behind and what we're doing is marking up our sanding clad. So this stuff is two millimeters thick, but it's laced with silver ions to kill bacteria. We've just popped it in Opti Cutter because we have several pieces that we need to get out of these two bits. And um, I'm just wearing Dave out first and getting him to mark it all up before we cut it and get it in the vehicle. So he's going to focus on this and I'm going to focus on some more of the stuff inside that's just required like wiring and this, that, the other. So we can start putting it back together. It feels like such a long time ago that I, or what, we ran all of the cable for this. And we're finally getting around to installing it. So. When we went away um, on our shakedown trip a couple of weeks ago, we've just wired all of this up sort of temporary. But what I'm gonna need to do now is to run it up to its final position. And what I'm gonna do is put it up high. So when we build the sofa, because that's gonna come to about here, it should be just above where we're gonna sit. And then on this side, in this space here, is gonna be our light switch for the bathroom. And that's the wiring all neat and tidy for now. Like a humongous jigsaw all of this. So we've got the first inner panel of this cut. So Dave's cut that. We're just gonna cut out, sorry, drill out a hole for some cable for the lighting. Then we can start getting these wooden panels back in, um, sort of one at a time. But it has to go together in a particular order because how we're constructing it. You know, like, what's like Krypton factor? Before I can continue even further, I actually need to drill some more holes out for the shower mixer. Now we've gone for a thermostatic shower mixer and I've bought this adapter plate. So if you're installing it in a wall like we are, you need an adapter plate like this. My shower comes with a little guide, drilling guide I've got here, that you'd normally slide over your pipes. Obviously the pipes aren't there yet because we're going to use this. And you can see on here, I've got half inch John Guest fittings on the bottom for my push fit. And then these guys here will protrude through the wall. So I just need to mark up where they need to come through the wall and then drill those out 
accordingly before I can see where this on the back needs to sit. And I think I'm gonna have to sort of mock up, um, well, fashion up a, another batten for this to go on. I then took the temporary toilet wall to make a template and get it chopped up on the new piece. And you'll see how wide our door eventually will be. The next stage was to cut the door shape out of the front birch plywood. This is on a taper for obvious reasons because it gradiates along with the shower tray and all was going well until I made a fatal error. So I measured up and I went to cut it off and I've cut it off the wrong end. Um, which is a real faux pas. So what we're going to have to do is fix this because this is a very expensive piece of wood by filling it in and I'll have to see how that's going to look and then cut it off the other end. So something that should have taken 10 minutes is going to be a good few hours work. So yeah, if you two do more on it things, leave me a comment down below. Um, we're overcoming it though. Dave's here as well and he has been very supportive. And like I say, we'll laugh about it later. But for now, I'm just trying to fix it. Is he laughing? It's very unlike him not to laugh. What a terrible error. After a short while, it was straight onto the repair. So we packed out the gap filled it with sawdust and glue, and then waited for the rain to pass. Whilst we were doing this, we drilled out the shower tray. We used the drill bit to make sure that it was accurate before filling in the back of the plywood with some Sikaflex sealant. The front was then able to be installed. We did this with Sikaflex, brad nails, and we screwed through from the back. This meant we were ready to seal up the shower room. Then we're gonna seal it up with this thing. So this is a shower proof water, a shower waterproofing kit um, made for wet rooms. And although we're gonna put the sanding clad over it and it's all gonna be sealed and we hope no water will ever get through, we thought it would be a good idea to actually seal the whole room. In the box, you get this tape, which is the jointing tape. You can see that there's a fold line down the middle. You get this stuff, which you put on first, it's the primer and you get this MAPE gum, which you put on after two hours, and that's what does the real seeding. So I have already, I can show you, masked up where I don't want it to get. I just need to mask up the plug hole, give it a good clean in here, and then we'll be ready to start sealing this out. Next thing you need to do is add the tape down the sides which I'm going to do now and then you add the mape, mape eye gum I don't know what it's called but it's basically the waterproofing solution itself so what does three coats of this stuff look like well it looks a bit like an elephant that has exploded everywhere I just need to let that dry now for at least 24 hours thankfully in a way I'm working this week so it's going to have many more days to dry and um, the only bits I couldn't use the tape on so were well, up here on the curve because you just couldn't get it to lie flat. But that will be sealed round with um, Puraflex, which is a bit like Sikaflex. The same on this side. These joints here have been taped and painted. The same with all around the tray apart from the threshold, which again will be sealed. The lip of the wet room floor is actually going to come all the way out to the lipper here. So that shouldn't be too much of an issue, but I will seal that. Here we're gonna have the tambour door come down and over and around. And then that will form the sort of front edge of the tray, if you like, the watertight seal. But at the back there where I've got a ever so slight gap there, so I'm gonna put a piece of profile along there to just form another sealed lip, just in case any water does get inside the tambourine door. That way it won't leak off the back of it. But as you can see, well, you probably can't tell on here, this end of the tray is higher than this end. So wherever possible, we'll be pointing obviously the vehicle so it drains this way. And now we play the waiting game of drying. I got out here for like 35 minutes to get this second and third coat done. Um, I'm not sure which it was. We're at the beach today. 
trying out our new mics because it's super windy. I want to win. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We came here last year on Father's Day as well. Did we? Yeah. yeah. So I guess it's a tradition now. Yeah. I think it was a bit like this then as well. Yeah, probably. The, the uh, tide's really in today. It's the highest we've seen it for a while since we've been here. Muddy. Yeah. That's whales over there. Whales is very far away from us. What well, if you found a big stone? It was great to take some time out of the beach and you really do need to take time away from the build from time to time. But then on one Tuesday evening, we got on with installing the outro in the bathroom floor. First of all, this was cut to its final size with a really sharp Stanley blade. And then I had to mix up the outro mix, which comes in two parts. And you need to mix the whole pot Here's Richard making a Christmas cake. Think that's mixed? Yeah. My dad's giving blood. How many points are you on now, Dad? 99. 99? And what are you doing, Richard? I'm just putting this floor adhesive down, which is something that's new to me. I'm using the trowel that they suggested and you've got 20 minutes to get this done. Oh really? Yeah. Gosh. A bit like when you put the grout on. Yeah. Before it's, you put tiles down. It's the same principle, yeah. Yeah. and then played with a roller tape to make sure that the gradient was correct. I opened and closed the toilet a few times to make sure that it passed over as it should. After that had set, it was time to clean off the back of the Santa Clad. So I used some of my trusty panel wipe to get this all clean. The back of this stuff's pretty smooth. So what I've decided to do is just to braid it just to give it an extra sort of surface to key to really. I haven't read anywhere that this is what you should do, but it makes sense to me. I have seen on a, on a couple of the Facebook groups, actually, people have used this stuff. And then when it's got hot, because where it's let go from the sealant, it could kind of go into waves. And I really, really want to try and avoid that if I can. So I'm being extra careful uh, with my prep and hoping that it doesn't happen to me. We're actually going to start install the two end pieces now. We're going to use this stuff, so it's Puraflex 40. The key thing with this is it remains flexible when it goes on and it's very strong and it's heat resistant as well. And people use it on their boats. That was a cone just falling down. So we've used it on the roof, we've used it everywhere else and the build's taken so long that we, we know that it holds up. I layered on lots of the Puraflex 40, but then made sure I smoothed out and then used a grouting tool to create this textured finish. The remaining wall panels were then put in place and rolled on to make sure that they were secured. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put all of the Puraflex on the roof and then we're going to push it in and clamp it in place to just hold it in there while it bonds. But this is gonna be the trickiest bit. gonna let it dry overnight before we strip all this stuff off but ceilings the walls are all clad now let's so have a look see if it's all stayed in place i did clamp it all it's 
feels quite dry. It does take a, a, a while to go off this stuff because it's PU sealant. But that's bonded nicely now, I think. What I want to try and achieve is around this area here, um, have it basically watertight up to the window sill because the window itself actually has drain holes on the outside of it. So if water gets in there, um, it will drain out. But obviously if it gets in here, there's nowhere for it to go at the moment, apart from down into the wall, which we don't want. We want it to drain back into the shower tray itself. Dave and I then spent the best part of Sunday cutting, reshaping and sealing in this window sill. Peeling time. I've done none of this, but I get to do the best bit. The next part was to tape up the masking tape and then seal with some flexible silicone. Okay, it's all sealed now and hopefully waterproof. So next steps are we need to put the shower in and test to see if it finger cross our design has worked and it is actually going to be waterproof. See you next time. Have a great week. One, two, three. Bye. Bye.